Well, it's the final day of the Marseille Trophy. Thanks for joining us on Audi Medcamp TV. A couple of the guys from Container and Iberdrola join us in the studio this evening to have a chat about the week in racing, which ended rather disappointingly today when the Mistral blew through. We were getting about 30 knots plus this afternoon, so there was a lot of waiting around in the village going on today. Disappointingly, at about 2.30 we ran out of time and racing was abandoned, but that was probably good, well it was good news for the teams that were on top of the leaderboard. Uh, before we take a look back at the weekend racing though, we're going to take you through a new Audi Med Cup concept which gets a local team on board. This year the Audi Med Cup has brought the Soto 40 class to Europe. The boats are fast, strong, easy to manage and equal in every respect. The objective is to promote this one design class to as many new crews as possible along the course of the season. To achieve this, the Audi Med Cup has introduced a clever plan to maximise the opportunities for new crews to try the boat by having a local team race one of the boats at each event. The boat is called 22 and in this case it's called 22 Marseille because uh, the idea behind this boat is also giving an opportunity to the different local teams to join the Audi Med Cup circuit. In Cascais it was the Portuguese sailing team that took control this time it was a French crew. The experience was rewarding, fun and addictive. It's been a really short week on board, but I'm totally hooked. It's great. I've been sailing Corel 45, Far 40, Mum 30. They're all in the same league. But this is a great example of how this kind of racing boat has evolved. The 22 project is one way to attract the attention of potential new competitors that may then decide to compete full-time in future Audi Med Cup seasons. Well, Agustin Filueta from Iberdrola, what do you think of the, the local concept? I mean, you guys have been racing against 22 from Marseille, and then we had the, the Portuguese team um, in Cash Guys. What do you make of this concept? Well, it's been a, a very good idea from uh, the circuit. I think uh, they did very well in uh, Portugal. Uh, the team was uh, leading by an Olympic uh, team and uh, here in Marseille they sailed very well and they were a very competitive team. Okay, well uh, 22 did have a lot of fun this week and they had a couple of wins as well, maybe just one win. Uh, but there was only one team that reigned supreme and that was Iberdrola. Here are the highlights from the week of Soto 40 racing. The new Soto 40 class had made its European debut in Qashqaish one month ago and it continued to spread its charm across another group of sailors and racing fans when it came to Marseille. One of the plans of the Audi Med Cup organisers with this exciting new one design class was to introduce the boat to a local crew at each event by making a boat available. A strong team from Marseille led by Alain Fédoncieux and Nicolo Béranger got their hands on the Smart U1 design just two days before the regatta started and they promptly went out and won the first race. And following the second race they were still at the top of the leaderboard although now sharing it with the Spanish yacht Iberdrola. Another newcomer to the Audi Met Cup circuit but certainly not newcomers to the Soto 40 class was the Latin American squad sailing Patagonia Negra. Whether they were jet-lagged or just in awe of the European scene was difficult to tell, but their first result was not their best. As the week progressed, they found their form and rounded out the Marseille Trophy with two wins and a third to take second place overall. But it was the Spanish Iberdrola team that managed the most consistent regatta, winning three races and never finishing worse than third. This was more than enough to take the top step on the podium. This is the leaderboard uh, for the Marseille Trophy. Iberdrola team winning the Marseille Trophy from uh, Patagonia by Negra. They're the local, the, sorry, the team from uh, South America, followed up by Noticia and 22 from Marseille and Ngoni in fifth place. 
And this is how the leaderboard is looking for the, the whole circuit. Iberdrola team way out ahead there with 27 points. Um, Patagonia in second place. Now, Augustine, congratulations, first of all, on what's been another fantastic regatta for you. Two regatta wins in a row. You must be loving this boat. Yeah, well, it has been <coughs> a very good uh, start for us. Uh, the circuit uh, has been good for uh, our team. Uh, we did a very good job in uh, Portugal and also here in Marseille. I'm uh, very happy with the crew. I'm very happy with the uh, with boat and we, we we just have to, to keep with the same results on, on the next regatta to, to win the circuit, which is our principal target. Tell us a little bit about the, um, the Soto 40s, because they're so popular in, in South America, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are so popular in South America. One of the important things for this regatta is that one of the teams, uh, the, the, well, the best team of South America, Negra uh, by Patagonia, uh, was coming here. So for us, it uh, was, was one of the targets one of the objectives to, to win them and to beat them okay it was uh, possible we we sailed very good i have to say that uh, the team was very concentrated at the top of the level and i think the soto 4d class is is been uh, better and better and probably next year we'll have uh, 10 boats and very good circuit mm, a fantastic week of racing in the soto 40s here are all the highlights from the TP52s as well, which was taken out today, well, yesterday in fact, because we had no racing today, by the container team. The first few races of the Marseille Trophy were sailed in light and shifty winds from the southeast in the Rad Sud. The first two races set the tone. It was going to be the most consistent boat that would win. The first winner was Audi Azura, but they followed that up with a last place in the next race. Somewhere in the middle would be the boat that would be the overnight leader, and it was Quantum. The runner-up in Kashkais, the German container, had four really poor results in a row, making their position as the best of the rest after the first event looked really tenuous. The forecast for the weekend was for strong breezes with the famous Marseille Mistral potentially threatening racing on the last day. The Audi Med Cup race committee wisely opted to get three races in on the Thursday to get ahead of the programme. The conditions were such that ultimately six different boats from a fleet of eight would win races in Marseille, and it was the most valuable win of all collected on the bonus points coastal race that finally propelled the continuously improving container right up to the top of the rankings. The regatta came to an early conclusion after this race as the much anticipated fresh Mistral win put pay to the last scheduled race on Sunday, meaning the container had won the Marseille trophy. What a week for Container, that win yesterday, bumping them up to first on the leaderboard ahead of uh, Quantum Racing, who had led that Marseille Trophy leaderboard all week. So here's how the uh, season tr uh, trophy is looking. The leaderboard, Quantum Racing on top, with Container just in behind. Well, how, well, a fantastic week for you guys. I mean, you didn't win a race until yesterday, but it's that consistency right through the week that really won the, the week for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and uh, it was a very interesting week for our team. You know, we didn't, as, as you heard in the broadcast, we didn't come out so well, and we had a rough first day and even a rougher second day, and we kind of regrouped, uh, took a look at our performance, kind of scrutinized what we could try to do differently, and... We came out and lived by our motto, and that is that, you know, every day is new. You take one race at a time, and you just keep trying to pick at it and, and uh, try to get that next boat in front of you. And that third day, having a score line of a second, third, and a second really kind of motivated us and brought us back into the regatta. I think what strikes me about your team, and a lot of teams out there, is the camaraderie, actually. I mean, you guys seem to be a really tight-knit group. Marcus Visa, the, the, the helmsman, actually personally chose each member of the team to be there, didn't he? Yes, he did, and it's, uh, it's an important dynamic of our team that we all get along and that we're all here because uh, we're passionate about sailing and we're also very passionate about our owner, Udo Schutz, who has uh, been, a, been a mainstay in global sailing and specifically in uh, sailing in Europe. And we all want to try to perform well for Udo. You only got on this boat a week before competing in Cash Guys. How cool was it up there today? Did you think you were going to be there? Like, when you got, first got on the boat, did you think we could have actually won that second regatta? Well, we didn't, to be honest, I really didn't think about it. I mean, we're, we were trying, and we still are, we're trying to build a team, we're trying to make a boat that performs better. And, you know, obviously if we do that well, we hope that we can come out towards the top. So we didn't have, you know, we don't have too many expectations. We just want to do the best we can and keep improving as a team. 
Well, the heat really comes on now because we're a regatta of peace with Quantum Racing and Container. We'll see what happens in Cagliari, which is the next event starting on uh, July the 19th. That's it for the Marseille Trophy, though. Thanks for joining us this week. I hope you've enjoyed the racing as much as we have. We'll see you in Cagliari in July.